Praise the Lord, everyone. We're born again Christians out here sharing the hey, gospel you take of this Jesus banner? Christ. Not just the love of God, not just the goodness of God, but also we share the severity of God. Here's a little song that says, Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. And now, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of That's what I was thinking. the Lord has done. New kids on the rock. The Lord has done for us. Give thanks. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We're singing love. Is that flow that makes me white and slow? No other fountain I know. But nothing but the blood of, nothing but the blood of, nothing but the blood of Jesus. It's Jesus Christ that we exalt tonight, folks. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgression. Mm. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement for our feet was upon us. By his strength, with his strength, we are healed. Jesus Christ was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah 700 years prior to his coming. The Bible says that Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered. His ultimate goal was to deny himself, to do the will of the Father, and to die and shed his blood for our sins. The Bible says on the third day that he was rolled again with all power in his hands. So listen, folks, the question is not does God love you. Yes, God does love you. The question is, do you love God? And if you love God, the Bible says you must keep his commandments. There are commandments that you must keep. The Bible says Jesus says, I love them that love me. And what is one of the what is one of the requirements for salvation? The Bible says one of the conditions is repentance. That word repentance in the Greek, it literally means a U-turn. That means if you're traveling up 75, and you realize you're going the wrong way, you need to get off at the next exit and go the opposite direction. You need to turn from your sins. Whatever your sins is tonight, maybe it's drunkenness, it's homosexuality, it's lust, it's pornography, it's masturbation, it's it's fornication, sexual immorality. Whatever your sin is tonight, God That's for you, sir. From it. There's power over sin tonight. And there's power through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. This is not about praying to a priest, going to a Catholic priest. A mortal man cannot forgive you of your sin. Only Jesus Christ was 100% God and 100% man. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is seated right now at the right hand of the Father, constantly making intercession for his saints. But will you turn tonight? Will you turn from your sins? Will you turn from drunkenness, from selfish ambition? The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things of the world. For if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And this is the love of the world, the lust of the flesh. I was there. The lust of the eyes and the pride of life. This is not of God. This is of, this is of the devil. Folks, there came a point in my life where I had to bow down my knee to the Lord and say, Jesus Christ. The Bible says this, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So the question is, will you bow in this life? Because you're certainly going to bow in the life to come. When you stand before God on the day of judgment, 
you will bow trembling under the wrath of God if you die in your sin. But there's hope tonight. You don't have to die in your sin. This is what we preach. We preach hope. We preach on the goodness of God and we preach on the severity of God. There is a wrath that's coming against sin. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. Yes, I was that wicked man once. I went to the military. I was in the Navy Special Air Force Division in the Army. I went to Iraq, was jumping out of airplanes for a living, did all of that. And every time I lay and jumped out of an airplane, I would kneel and say, thank God, after I released my rider. And guess what I would do after that? I would go to get drunk, go get high, do porn If I couldn't find somebody at the club, I would go watch pornography. All these different things. I love my sin more than I love God. And I call myself a Christian. See, listen, folks, you can't hold hands with God and hold hands at the devil at the same time. The Bible says this, you can't serve two masters, for either you will love the one and hate the other. When Jesus Christ died for Satan tonight, this is that woman that was caught in the midst of adultery. And the scribes and Pharisees and all the religious leaders brought this woman before the Lord Jesus Christ. And they said, Jesus, the law says this woman needs to be stoned. The law says this woman needs to be condemned. What do you say? And Jesus, the Bible says Jesus their hearts. He looked around at everyone that was there with stones in their hands. There the stone, the woman. And he said, those without sin cast the first stone. The Bible says that everyone dropped their soul because they realized they had sin in their heart. We're not here to cast stones. We're just here to tell you the truth of the gospel, what Jesus Christ said. The truth of the gospel is no and sin no more. There's power over a life of sin. Just as a boat travels on top of the water, and a good boat won't allow water into the boat. Likewise, a true born-again Christian will love who will, will, will ride above the sea of sin. He won't allow sin in their life. They'll practice discipline, prayer, of reading the Bible, of fasting, of praying. For men, you will you will learn how to bounce your eyes. See, the Bible says, whoever looks upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery already in their heart. See, God raised Jesus, raised the standard of what the law was all about. The Bible says that Jesus fulfilled the law. So as born-again Christians, we establish the law through the Lord, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's through His shed blood that we live. We live by a new law now. It's called the law of Christ, the law of love. That's the standard. See, grace doesn't just cover sin. Grace is not a license to sin, folks. But grace is empowerment to walk in the Spirit of God. For the Bible tells us in the book of Titus, it says, For the grace that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. See, the Bible says that Jesus says that those who endure to the end shall be saved. There's grace that's available that's poured out. Listen, folks, I was one of those ones who used to, every time I saw the street preacher, I was one of the ones who used to say, well, we're all sinners. We all sin every day in word, thought, and deed. But, but what's funny, what's interesting is that Jesus told that woman caught in the midst of adultery, he told her to go and sin no more. See, when you're born again, you're no longer a sinner, but God makes you a saint all throughout the New Testament. You can read the epistles. When Paul wrote, he wrote to the saints of Colossae, to the saints of Corinth, to the saints of Philippi. You are a saint. You're born again. You're washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's what God desires to do for you tonight. So we're preaching hope to you. But also we're preaching on the severity of God. See, the Bible says that when Jesus was baptized and when he came back from out of the wilderness, 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says that the first message that Jesus Christ preached was a message of repentance. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the same message that we preach tonight. The message of repentance, forsaken sin, turning from your life of sin. That means stop sin. God will give you the strength. He'll give you the grace to walk with Him consistently. And if you do fall into sin, the Bible says you will con the Bible says in the book of 1 John, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us. He cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God will do it. But we don't we don't walk into sin anymore. We don't willfully go into sin. There was a period of time in my life where I would just use that scripture just to willfully walk into sin. 
I would go to the bars and I would go fornicate and I would go uh, sell drugs and say all these things. And I would say, well, the Bible says that if I, if, I, uh, if I ask God to forgive me of my sins, he'll forgive me. But that's not what repentance is. Repentance is having a broken and contrite heart. The Bible says that it's not the sorrow that God wants. It's godly sorrow, not worldly sorrow. This is an example. What worldly sorrow is, if a man is caught in the midst of adultery, he will stop his sinning because he realized there was a man with a shotgun and it pointed at his head. He said, if you touch my wife, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to blow your brains out. That's worldly sorrow. That man will stop because he doesn't want to die. He doesn't want to get shot. But godly sorrow, godly sorrow is like what David said. I've sinned against God. I've sinned against the holy God who loved me, who shed his blood for me. How can I continue to live a life of sin? How can I continue to live a life of rebellion against God? That's why I'm willing to turn from my sins and ask the Lord Jesus Christ for strength. Look, give you grace and power over sin. So you can go and sin no more. That's the power of the gospel, folks. That's the power of the gospel of Jesus That's free, sir. See, Jesus doesn't just merely come to improve the quality of your life. It's That's free, man. Two camps of Christians today. The first camp says, I'm going to come to the Lord Jesus Christ because I want to be a millionaire. I want to be happy. I want to be successful. I want to be wealthy. Folks, that's the draw off the unification of gospel. That's a false gospel. Jesus died to free us from our sins. He died so that we won't have to face the wrath of a holy God on the day of judgment. Jesus Christ didn't merely die just to improve the quality of our life. Jesus Christ died to save us from our sins. He died to save us from the wrath to come. Turn to Jesus. The Bible says that there is a wrath that's coming against the children of Turn to Obedience. Jesus. Listen, folks, there's an awful place called hell. It's not God's will for, every, for anyone to go there. For the word of God says this, that God does not take delight in the death of the wicked, but that they will turn and live. That's it's right. Not God's will that anyone should perish, but, shall all, but that all should come to repentance. There's a place called hell. And the Bible describes hell as an awful place, a place of weeping, a place of gnashing of teeth. The Bible says hell is a place where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. Folks, this is a place where the wicked will spend eternity. They will live there forever and ever and Never. ever separated away from God. Why? Because God has been pouring out his love to them while they walk the earth. He's been wooing them with, with his love. Even every day while they live, when they look up and see the sun, God is saying, why don't you turn and live? When they have breath in their nostrils, God is saying, why won't you turn and live? When street preachers proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, and you reject it, you say, no. And God is reaching out to you and saying, why won't you turn and live? That's why there's a place called hell. It was never designed for us. The Bible describes him as a place that was designed for Satan and his angels. But we, as free will, uh, as humans with free will, we can decide whether or not we want to choose to turn to God or choose to live our own self. See, what the devil wants you to do is to live for yourself. Selfish pleasure. If it feels good, do it. Oh, that's called the lust of the flesh. If it feels good, do it. The lust of the eyes. Oh, I want that. I want it. And, and the pride of life. The pride of I mean, life you is when you exalt yourself. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Life is when you exalt you, yourself. Man. When you choose God bless not you. to live after God. Choose not Thank to you. live after the commands of God. See, the Bible says that Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. And the Bible says His commandments are not grievous. They're not grievous. That's for you, man. It's easy for me. God bless you with the heart of repentance. God. I don't have to live a life of sin. I don't have to live a life of fornication. A life of adultery. Cheating on my wife. A life of selling drugs. A life of where it's all about me. I gotta get the best call, the finest call. I gotta get the prettiest girl. I gotta get the the, the, the biggest job, the, the biggest paying job. Where it's all about me. Selfish ambition. But God said, No. I want you to live for me. Where Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, not I, but Christ that lives inside of me. I live by the Son of God who died for me and shed his blood for me. That's what we're preaching today. We're preaching the Lord Jesus Christ. We're preaching on the goodness of God and also on the severity of God. See, the love of God tells us to warn people of judgment, to warn people of hell, to warn people of the wrath of God. The love of God warns just as if I was driving down I-95 
and the road all of a sudden cut out on him. And I stopped, I slammed on my brake. Will I just simply turn around knowing that other vehicles are coming by, uh, behind me? No, because I love my fellow man. I'm going to get out of my car and I'm going to make makeshift signs and I'm going to say, hey, that's right. go the other way. Go the opposite direction. There's death here at the edge of this cliff. I'm going to try my best to persuade my fellow man who's driving to go the opposite direction. This is what we're doing tonight. The love of God compels us to warn, to warn of, of the wrath of God. Folks, there's a scripture that the pastor is really not preaching today. It's in Psalm 5.5. Five, it says that God hates the work of the iniquity. I know that's a hard scripture, but that's the truth. Yes, God does love. God extends his benevolent love to all mankind. But at the same time, God hates sin. There's a wrath that's coming. Again. Turn to Jesus. God Amen. is a power over sin. Do you get one of these? Of Jesus Christ. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 77, verse 11, it says that God is angry with the wicked every day. When God gives us life, He gives us health, He gives us strength, He gives us the sun, He gives us rain upon our crops. Why won't you turn to this? The Bible says that God does not take the life in the death of the wicked, but that they will turn and live. So that's the gospel that we preach tonight. True love warns. Just as a fire, firefighter will put down the door, and there's a sleeping family, and the firefighter grabs the family, or police officer. I thank God for these uh, law enforcement officers. That's right. police officer will risk their life. They will kick down the door and save a family from a burned building. And the family will say, hey, what are you doing? And the firefighter and the police officer will let them know there's a fire in your house. You need to get out. You need to get out. You need to turn. Well, that's the same way what we're doing tonight. You need to turn from your sins. The Bible says this is the fallen world that we're living in. We see it every day. I was a soldier in Iraq. I, I swore to you the advocate. I've seen that happen over here in Iraq. You want to give him back the mic? That's my fellow soldier. Oh, you don't? Oh, okay. Went over there. It was horrible. I've seen the result of war. I've seen the result of sin. But the Bible says that there is a way out of sin, and that way is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. There's a, there's a, a famous scripture that everyone probably memorized since they were a little child. John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved this world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Listen, folks, that word believe is not simply believing in a God, but the Bible says that the demons even believe in trouble. It's not simply talking about mental ascent. It's talking about believing in your heart. Again, I was in the army. I was a paratrooper. I jumped out of airplanes for a living. If I'm uh, trusted in that parachute, I'm going to believe that that parachute is going to save me from the from the jump from the uh, jump, jump to come. When I exited that high performance aircraft, I had faith in my parachute. I put my life on the line for that parachute. That parachute saved me. That's the same way. To believe in the Lord Jesus Christ is not meant to ascend, but you're putting your faith and trust in Him every day of your life. You're willing to turn from, from a life of sin. You're willing to say, Lord, I'm willing to make you not just my Savior, but the Lord of my life. That's right. I'm willing to trust you as my God. There's many folks today that want, that want Jesus. They want to... They want to get out of hell free car, which basically I was, I was one of those folks at one particular point in life. I just wanted Jesus to save me from the penalty of my sin. But you have to have all of him. For the Bible says that Jesus says, if a man will come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow after me. For whoever desires to be first shall be last. And whoever will be last and the, and the last shall be first. So this is the gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ warns of the severity of God. It also tells us about the goodness of God. All right, got one more song, and then we'll have another preacher come. Amen. You're doing great, man. You're golden. There is God like you. Turn it up. No one else can touch my heart. It's on the it's on the handle. No, no, no. The the, the one in your hand. Oh, guys. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Praise the Lord. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. My heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You pay 
the prize for me. Way back on Calvary, that's why I praise you. I lift you up and I'll magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. See, the gospel of Jesus Christ, you all, it is 100%. It's either you go all with God or you don't go at, at, at all. You don't go at all. See, the Bible says that Jesus says the kingdom of God is like a man who finds a treasure hidden in the field. He goes and he sells everything that he has so that he can go and buy that field. And that's what it's like with Jesus Christ. It's either all or nothing. You can't have your love of the world and your love of God. You can't have your love of alcoholism and your love of fornication and adultery. I've been there, folks. You can't have your love of, of trying to get the, the highest paying job so that everyone in your family can just esteem you and say, yes, I made the, the six-figure job so that you can be seen as the highest. That's called pride, the pride of life. I'm not against riches or I'm not against money. But what I am against and what God is against is selfish ambition. Yeah. When well, you're simply living for yourself instead of living for the Lord Jesus Christ. See, God created us in His image so that we can live for Him. Not for selfish pleasure, but so that we can live for Him. So that we can turn from our sins. So we can turn and live. God. God bless you. Love you all. Man, that was awesome, dude. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.